the remainder theorem states that if the polynomial f of x is divided by the binomial term x minus c, then the remainder is f of c. That is, if f of x equals x minus c, we're dividing by that, times our, qu our quotient plus our remainder, then f of c equals r of x. Why is that the case? What happens to this function if we substitute in c for x? Well, let's do that. Let's do that. c minus c times q of x plus r of x. c minus c is 0. So 0 times our quotient is 0. And we are left with r of x. So let's apply this briefly. Calculate a versus the remainder theorem challenge. I will use the remainder theorem to find f of negative 2, while you evaluate f of negative 2 using your calculator. And go. Let's see if I can beat you. I'm going to take 2, minus 1, minus 4, 6. And I'm evaluating negative 2. Right, so that is what I'm going to put in here. All right, so that would be 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Adding those two would be negative 5. Negative 2 times negative 5 is 10. Negative 4 plus 10 is positive 6. So that would be negative 12 for a final result of negative 6. Now let's see if that do that if that's, that was any quicker. 2 times negative 2 cubed minus negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 plus 6. Negative 6. Same result. Same result, but admittedly, the remainder theorem, okay, using that to use the synthetic division is a lot quicker once you get the hang of synthetic division really well, which hopefully you do by now. Use synthetic division and the remainder theorem to find p of 3 for the function p of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5. Well, I'm going to fill in my values. I have 1 minus 3. I'm missing an x term, so 0 and 5 from x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5. Now, we are finding p of 3, so I'm going to put x equals 3 off to the left, bring down the 1, multiply 3 times 1, be 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. So 0 plus 0 is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. 5 plus 0 is 5. So p of 3 equals 5. Now you could ask this question differently. You could have said, is x minus 3 a factor of p of x. Why or why not? Well, we know that something is a factor whenever the remainder is equal to zero. So that should help us answer that question.